everyone, welcome to Lowdown, your source for music, arts, and entertainment from the Akron area and beyond. On this live episode, we'll be featuring some interviews from a local artist, a local musician, and a live performance from Canada's band here in the UTV studio. everyone, I'm Tyler Dillinger and welcome to this semester's Lowdown Live Show. We're going to jump right in and start off with our first feature for today. I interviewed my good friend and co-worker Anise Patterson. She's a multifaceted artist who has recently been focusing mostly on her painting practice. This interview includes some bonus progress footage of a sketch she did of everyone's favorite podcaster, Joe Rogan. Without further ado, let's roll it! All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Nice, and a little and a little bit about myself. I like to paint. I make realistic portraits with acrylic paint, but I also like to draw, knit, crochet. I like being creative, express my creativity. My favorite kind of art that I've done is isn't with me, unfortunately, but it is an Anthony Bourdain painting that I made for a coworker about a year ago. He was a chef. He had his own had his own TV show. Uh, it was like Parts Unknown with Anthony Bourdain. Uh, I mean, it's hard to dis it's hard to say when when I decided to become an artist because I've always I've always liked drawing, making art. I've been doing this since I was a kid, since I was a kid. But I didn't get into painting until eight years ago. I treat my art like a hobby. I do this for fun, but if I had all the time in the world, I would like to make work out of it, a career. Yes, I do. So I have my FK Twix painting. Uh, she's a musician, and I just like I just like the little details, especially her hair, her mm -hmm. eyeshadow, her buckles. Especially with his afro, if you look closely. This one's already varnished, so... Um, the length of time my second project took me had to been um, had to be a month because I started I started working on this in April. No wait, it might have been no I finished her in April and I started I started working on this in March. So it took at least a month. Not really but when it comes to influences if I see an artist that I like on Instagram, on any type of social media, I follow them like their artwork because I like something about their style. There's one artist on Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> he works with oil pastels, but his artwork is, is more of a caricature style and it's beautiful. I do. Uh, my social media is artsyweirdo96 on Instagram, 
and I also have a TikTok, which is the same name, Artsy Widow 96 and I just post the art, the progress on, on my page, like the process from start to finish. I'm always really glad to see folks flourishing in their own creative elements. But don't go anywhere. Lowdown will be right back. We need to break into the vault and steal the Akron After Hours episodes and broadcast them from the comm tower on the roof. Welcome back, my fellow rocket scientists. My fellow epidemiologists. My fellow primatologists. Fellow neuroscience enthusiasts. Fellow historians. Today's episode is going to be a blast because we're talking about volcanoes. I'm going to be talking about defibrillators. Arachnophobia. Colorblindness. Yawning. Synesthesia. The reign of terror. Now you know. Now you know. So go out. Go out. Go out. Enjoy life. And, and stay, stay curious. curious. You're watching ZTV. Welcome back, everyone. For our next feature, Tanner interviewed Rich Sherwood. Rich is a musician who has played in the Kent area for a long time, and he's been involved with quite a number of different music groups. Let's get right into it. Hey, welcome to the show. My name is Rich Underwood. Uh, you may know me if you're old, and your grandparents probably came and see me play. But uh, I've uh, been playing, playing music since 1962, <clears throat> and um, made a, that's what I've done full time, you know, all my life. I've played music, did a couple side jobs, but that's uh, all, I, all I've really done for you know to uh, make a living. I actually, when the uh, wagon train came west, that's how I got to Ohio, from a uh, little town called Cool Center, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's uh, it's one of those places, I mean, you can go back now and it looks almost exactly like it did then. Most of the people I went to school with, the guys I went to school with and hung around, uh, they either become coal miners, steel workers, railroad, worked on the railroads or the, or the boats, you know, and girls. The majority of them became teachers. And I uh, said so it was pretty much life back here. So uh, I looked at them all and said, I don't think I want to do this. I think I want to do music. And, and then I asked myself, you don't know anything about music. Well, I like it. <laughs> I, talk, I used to have a lot of conversations with myself. This is how I got to be a, the, the play guitar. Was um, I just always liked, the, liked guitar music. I liked listening to it. My family moved here in 64. I stayed in Pennsylvania to graduate in 65. And I had a band back there that I put together in, in 62. The, the band in Pennsylvania was called The Regions. And uh, we played clubs, but we didn't do um, like 
what people would think, you know, like rock and roll and stuff like this, which I've always wished that I had a tape of what we sound like because it was pretty crude, you know, uh, working back back then and doing doing bands. And uh, no, no such thing as PA systems or any of that. You plug the microphone, your high impedance microphone into your amplifier, and you sang through it. Uh, that's basically what everybody did. And uh, so as I look back, I used to think maybe we were weird, but no, nobody had PA systems back then. And uh, anyway, we played, and it was it was fun. We played a lot of attorney parties at the, the clubs. We played some uh, uh, pool parties every once in a while. But it was, like I said, there, you know, there wasn't much you know, teamwork and all, all that kind of stuff. So I moved, then I moved from Pennsylvania out here. And when I got to Ohio, um, put a band together with some guys from from uh, Brimfield, and then I got a house job with the house band at uh, the Cove in Kent, and worked with them for um, for quite a period. I was in the fall of '65. The band at the Cove was called the Majestics, and they were a formed formed band. Uh, had been been playing there for a number of years, and so we went uh, to play there from fall fall of uh, '65 into March '66, and we left and went to JB's, and because it was a brand new club, opened up. You know, it was like we just we had a good time. We weren't like you know this precision, you know harmony, that that all this stuff. We worked on our tunes. We did you know work out some songs, played them. But we were a fun interaction with the crowd type thing. Always goofing around with the crowd, doing joking with the crowd, uh, getting getting people to laugh at laugh at stuff. And so it was just like a, a different different period. Plus the fact too, I mean, we were growing long hair because we were musicians. But in most of the pictures I have from the Cove and from the JBs, if you look at the crowd, the people have short hair. You know, it's it's a, it was a different. Era. There was a lot of jocks in Kent. There were a lot of fights. Would go with the long hairs, uh, you know. So it wasn't loose as it, as it became like later. The long hair being fashionable. The Majestics. We in uh, May of '66. We went to um, a town right outside Detroit in Michigan. We cut. Uh, we had some guys come down to the club and listen to us, <clears throat> and they were from. This rainbow recording in, um, in Michigan. And they listened to us and they wanted us to come up and record. And uh, so we went up and we cut cut some tracks. And one of the tracks was, uh, he was a friend of mine. It was a, a tribute to Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy's assassination. Uh, it was on a Birds album. And uh, the second Birds album, Turn, Turn, Turn. And we took that song and just kind of Rocked it up a little bit. I mean, just gave it a little bit like a dance beat to it and things, but rather because it was pretty folky uh, rendition. And then the flip side of it, we did a song, an instrumental called um, Athena. And uh, then I left that group. I got an offer to go with the Measles, which was another popular band. They were one of the much more popular bands in Kent. We were running you know, neck and neck with those guys, and they were they were pretty precision. They were you know tight harmonies. Uh, they were more, you know, into, uh, what would I say, rather than like we were into uh, uh, quantity, they were into quality, you know, so so we went through that stuff and uh, I joined the Measles and in the Measles was, was uh, guitarist Joe Walsh, who became, you know, worldly famous, you know, uh, with, with his plan and his thing and the songwriting. And, uh, but when we worked together, I mean, it was just another musician. I always thought he was a really good guitar player. You know, he was very precise on what he was doing, the way he played, and and and, and you know, practice things. And so it was like I was looking really like to work a lot, maybe like twin guitar stuff, and you know, work with him on things. Then we played through just a you know a, a short period. I worked with him, and uh, the band. Then the band was breaking up. He was wanting to get into like blues and things. I had the draft breathing down my neck. So I was trying to get into the Navy or the Air Force because I figured, well, with Vietnam going on, maybe I might have a better chance of living if I go in the Navy or the Air Force. So I got back in uh, 
71 in uh, right around the May, something like that, 71. And uh, went through went through the summer just kind of checking things out, checking Ken out. So I checked around, I got a whole Jazz Madonna, a whole old, old bass player from the Majestics and the Sticks. And uh, called him and I goes, uh, hey, I goes, you know, you, know, you want to uh, get together, you know, and, and try to put a band together? Get a hold of a drummer from Akron from a group called Wild Butter named Rick Guerin. And he was a singing drummer, so I said, oh, well, this is great. And we start playing. And that night, just magic. It was just great. We had a, a couple that come in, and they were dancing like to every song, and just people were just, you know, starting to filter in and out and stuff, you know, listening to the group, up, up, up. And we're just throwing songs together, old tunes that we knew from, you know, from years ago. And then, you know, trying to, you know, fake through some of the newer stuff that, you know, we were playing. The band, Monopoly, this is going to be uh, the 50th year that have kept that band together. The original group uh, split, in, like I said, in uh, 70, 74, 75. And uh, that's when I start doing the trio. And I've used different people. I've used you know, some uh, keyboard, keyboards or sax and stuff you know, through the years. But basically, I kept Monopoly a trio. Right out of the blue, we were just thinking that one time before we went, went, went in to go on stage, I says, hey, let's grease up and do the 50s thing and just get all 50s and go in and do this, you know. So that was the birth of Rocco. And uh, some of the things we did also that, that I forgot to mention was uh, with the group back in 70, 73, uh, late 73 into 74, um, radio station, WKNT, was uh, now WNIR as a FM station. But back then we were uh, AM and we were on, we did a Sunday show called Monopoly's Dancing Days. And we did that uh, out of the studio. It was like from uh, six, six to nine. And then we'd fly from there down to the dome and play the dome uh, that evening. And uh, the show was basically like a DJ show. But it was actually really kind of cool. I had a lot of fun with it. Like I said, one of the characters, uh, when we started doing our Grease Act, doing our 50 shows, and we just to play things and people would call in. We didn't have an op open phone line. Uh, they didn't trust us, I guess, and which is good uh, because we let a lot, of, a lot of flaws come out on it and stuff that uh, went out kind of unnoticed. But, uh, and of course me, I'm, I try to work them in deliberately, you know, with, with things. The, uh, that, that went until we were abruptly pulled off the air. Can you believe it? Even back then, they were, they were so stringent about, you know, what was on the air or, or all this stuff. And we were just, just a fun thing. I mean, it was like college students, you know, it was like Saturday Night Live on the, on radio, but it was, just to, to do fun, and the college students loved it. The, the people at the station, with with, the, with these goofy guys out there on a Sunday night, hated it because we were getting letters, we were getting recognition. People, <laughs> the college kids, were, were having you know fun. The caller would call up, "Hey man, I, I didn't really like that last song, man. That, that was terrible." And I goes, hey, well, we aim to please our caller. So I pick an old 45 and crack it. You know, well, don't have to play that one anymore. You just do stupid stuff like that. It was just having fun with, with, the, uh, with the audience. So Monopoly's Dancing Days went dancing right out the door. <laughs> and that was it. I'm glad that I was born when I was. I'm glad that everything that happened because things just seemed to go like this. It's been a fun ride. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was really great to be able to experience such rich stories from this interview. Stick around. We'll be right back after this.
It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and stay home unless absolutely necessary. Use a delivery service for essential items like food and medicine. If you must make essential trips, stay six feet apart from other people. Wear a cloth face covering and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. And just like that, he was gone. The light of my life, the best person in the world, Drew Brown was gone. Oh, and so was Matt, I guess. How could I continue? How could I go on? How could Goof ever be the same? All those questions and more will be answered on this semester of Goofing Off. watching ZTV. We have a live performance brought to you here in the ZTV studios. Please welcome TMB.
One more time. here everybody we're tmb and that was an original song called kick me out alone we're going to keep this rolling and we're going to start with another tune called games they play everyone on the drums mr. Bradley Neff on bass guitar Adam Swartz and on guitar and vocals Tanner Martin this program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV. Make media make a difference.